He was a merchant, statesman, and prominent patriot of the American Revolution. He served as president of the Second Continental Congress and was the first and third governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. He was greatly remembered for his large and stylish signature on the United States Declaration of Independence, so much that the term John Hancock has become in the United States a synonym for signature. Good afternoon, I'm Will Brown and welcome to Central History. Today we'll be learning about John Hancock, a man who contributed greatly to the history of the United States of America. Born in Brantree, Massachusetts in 1737, John Hancock was an orphan as a child and was adopted by a wealthy merchant uncle who was childless. John Hancock soon after then attended Harvard College for business education and graduated at the tender age of 17. He took after his uncle as a clerk and proved so honest and capable that in 1760 he was sent on a business mission to England. There he witnessed the coronation of George III and engaged some of the leading businessmen of London. In 1763, his uncle died, and John Hancock inherited what was said to be the greatest body of wealth in New England. This placed him in a society of men who consisted mainly of loyalists, suspected by the working population because of their great affluence and social power. Hancock, however, soon became very involved in revolutionary politics, and his sentiments were, early on and clearly, for independence from Great Britain. He was in company with the Adamses and other prominent leaders in the Republican movement in New England. He was elected to the Boston Assembly in 1766 and was a member of the Stamp Act Congress. In 1768, John Hancock's Sloop Liberty was impounded by custom officials at Boston Harbor on a charge of running contraband goods. A large group of private citizens stormed the custom posts, burned government boats, and beat the officers, causing them to seek refuge on a ship offshore. Soon afterward, Hancock promoted the Boston Tea Party. The following year, he delivered a public address to a large crowd in Boston commemorating the Boston Massacre. In 1774, he was elected to the Provincial Congress of Massachusetts and simultaneously to the Continental Congress. When Peyton Randolph resigned in 1776, Hancock assumed the position of president. He retired in 1777 due to problems with gout and other health issues, but continued public service in his native state by participating in the formation of his constitution. He was then elected to governorship of the state where he served for five years, declined re-election, and was again elected in 1787. He served in that office until his death in 1793. The dignity and character of John Hancock, celebrated by friends and enemy alike, did not suffer for his love of public attention. He was a populist in every sense who held great confidence in the ability of the common man. He also displayed a pronounced contempt for the unreasoned authority. A decree had been delivered from England in early 1776 offering a large reward for the capture of several leading figures. Hancock was one of them. The story entirely unfolded is that on the signing of the Declaration of Independence, Hancock commented, the British ministry can read that name without spectacles. Let them double their reward. An alternate story, also unfolded, has him saying, There, I guess King George will be able to read that. He was the first to sign, and did so in an entirely blank space. No doubt, John Hancock's contribution to the American Revolution and the Declaration of Independence were great. Join us again next time to learn more about this great nation we call America. I'm Will Brown. Good day.